We have some fast solar wind, a filament that barely hangs on, and a big flare player fires a near-Earth-directed solar storm. Those stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.edu slash SWEN. It's weather for the 21st century. Space weather this week is staying a bit on the calm side. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we do have a lot of active regions in Earth view, including a couple big flare players like region 3912 and region 3917. But most of the activity this week is from small little mini solar storm eruptions and from some fast solar wind we're seeing from this coronal hole and soon from this big coronal hole right here. But what's interesting is we're taking a look at this kind of set of filaments right here that looks a bit like a three. Believe it or not, this is not the first time we've seen this particular filament cluster. This has actually was here last rotation and maybe even the rotation prior to that. The top part of it is beginning to look a bit unstable, but it manages to hang on even as it rotates through the Earth's strike zone. But we'll be paying more attention to it as it goes through. Meanwhile, region 3912 is getting much more active as it rotates to the west limb. In fact, early on the 8th, it fires an X 2.2 class flare. You see it right here. Bam! This actually caused an R3 level radio blackout over Africa and the Indian Ocean. And it also fires a solar storm. You can see a jet of plasma going by right there. As we take a closer look at it, you can watch the blast wave. Boom! So this was a big solar storm launch. It just doesn't look like it was Earth directed. So when you take a look at it in coronagraphs, you can see this thing launch right out here and it kind of looks like it's just going to go off to the west of us. But take a closer look at this area here and in here. It actually does look like some of this might be a shock wave that's gone past center disk here. And that means we might have just a little bit of a shock wave glancing by Earth and causing a little bit of disruption. And that's going to be centered right in that fast solar wind that we're already beginning to experience. So over the next couple days, aurora photographers at high latitudes, you might actually get a little bit of something from this solar storm, believe it or not. But meanwhile, as we go back to the disk, there's not a lot of other stuff going on. We've been paying very close attention to region 3917 because it is a big X flare player. And we've got a few new regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view over the next couple days. But with also this big filament right here, but it doesn't look like it's about to erupt. So we're just kind of sitting in hurry up and wait mode to see whether or not we're going to get any more Earth directed solar storms or if that risk for big flare activity is going to stay high. Now, returning to that Earth-directed or near-Earth-directed solar storm launch, we switch to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil. Now, this is NASA's version of the model. You're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And as I set this model in motion, you'll see that solar storm launch off to the west of Earth. But as you can see, it basically is getting really close. In fact, if we had a shock wave in front of it, you'd see that this actually does look like it grazes Earth a little bit. When we take a look at the uh, impact footprint, you can see there is a little bit of a space, but we could get a little bit of wake or something like that from this. So it's going to be a close call. So horror photographers, if you're looking at early on the 11th, if you're looking to outside and you might be you know, chasing some aurora from the fast solar wind. Don't be surprised if you get a little bit of a plus up and the aurora brightens a bit more because that could easily be the effect of this solar storm. Now, aurora photographers at mid latitudes, likely it's going to be a wash. We're not going to be able to see all that much, but so only if you're dedicated should you chase. So returning to the disk, we can no longer use stereo A imagery to see the far side of the sun. So we have to use HMI and AIA imagery of about two weeks ago to see what might be lurking on the sun's far side. And as we take a look at the imagery from about two weeks ago, we can see regions 3898 and 3903 on the sun's far side are about to rotate back into Earth view if these regions are still alive and kicking. And sure enough, as we take a look at the gong helioseismology far sided 
monitor. You can see regions 3898 popping up on the gong's little radar here, as well as region 3903 popping up there too. So these two regions are still very, very clear on the sun's far side. They are going to be rotating back into Earth view, and that means that we are going to get likely more flares from them and possibly more solar storms as well. Now, looking at the disk after that, we're probably going to have about three or four days of kind of blankness right here. So that means the risk for big flares will likely go down after that. But then, after about a week, we're going to have old regions 3905 and 3906 rotate back into Earth view, and that's where big flares might actually pick up once again, and the potential for big solar storms. So, Aurora photographers, if we don't get anything from the current uh, events happening right now, well, it may not be too long. You may only have to wait for a week before we can get some more action. Switching to our moon. We are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the 15th. So Unite Sky Watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, like, I don't know, maybe some aurora from the current uh, fast solar wind we're getting right now, or possibly from the Geminids, which will be peaking on around in and around the 13th and the 14th, you're going to have this bright companion, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the glancing blow from that solar storm that is not quite Earth-directed, along with the fast solar wind that we're experiencing right now. So at high latitudes, we're expecting active conditions kind of on and off, but NOAA's giving us up to about a 25% chance of minor storm conditions over the next couple days, with things beginning to settle down after that. So aurora photographers, if you're at high latitudes, you definitely could get a chance for some decent aurora. But as we switch to mid-latitudes, well, the conditions aren't quite as good. We are still dealing with that fast solar wind, but we aren't really expecting that solar storm as it glances by us to give us all that much strength for, in terms of aurora down at mid-latitudes. NOAA is expecting about a 20% chance of active conditions, possibly a chance for minor storm, but I seriously doubt that. And that's going to be through the 11th, but then by the 12th, things will begin to settle back down. So aurora photographers, if you're at mid-latitudes, well, only if you're dedicated, as I said before, only if you're dedicated should you chase. Now, switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are still sitting well in the triple digits for solar flux. We're sitting around 175 to 180 thereabouts right now, and that back number might actually dip a little bit as some of these bigger regions rotate to the sun's west limb. But we are still sitting at moderate noise range on the dayside radio bands. NOAA's giving us about a 60% chance of M-class flares. This is at an R1 to R2 level radio blackout over the next day or so, that will dip down just a little bit before it might rise again as we go into next week. We also have about a 10% chance of X-class flares. This is mainly from region uh, 3912 and 3917, so amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect those R3 level radio blackouts to be a bit of a problem here over the next couple days. Likely that will also calm down as we move throughout the week. Now as we switch to our radio Radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week. Everything is pretty much in the green. We are sitting at the D1 normal range. This is for you aviators at flight level 360. It's also the S0 quiet range for everybody else. NOAA is giving us about a 10% chance of an S1 to S2 level radiation storm uh, over tomorrow, and then things should calm back down. That's because region 3912 is rotating to the west limb right now, and that always elevates that risk but likely things are going to be fine as it rotates to the sun's far side. So all you frequent flyers and air crew, looks like you're all in the green this week, and so all is clear. So the space weather this week is staying a bit on the calm side. Now we do have a couple pockets of fast solar wind from some coronal holes that are rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, and aurora photographers at high latitudes, you could be getting some aurora right now, and likely that's going to be enhanced by a solar storm that's moving mainly west of Earth, but it does look like either the shock wave or a little bit of the weight could actually hit us starting early around the 11th, and that could enhance the aurora at high latitudes for about a 
a day or so before things calm down, but aurora photographers at mid-latitudes, well, likely it's not really going to move the needle, so you're likely going to have to sit this one out and wait for some better storming. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, we've had a big radio blackout at an R3 level just the other day. That is, you know, a big risk, but things are definitely calming down because that region, region 3912, is rotating to the sun's far side. And it looks like region 3917, although we're watching it, may not give us any big R3 level radio blackouts. So likely things and the risk is going to calm down over the next couple days before things begin to ramp up again in about a week. So enjoy the respite while you have it. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.